Now let's take a look at how binocular cues, in other words, cues that rely on the presence of two eyes, results in the ability to create, say, 3D movies and other 3D images. And it relies on this concept of binocular disparity, the fact that the left and the right eyes have a slightly different view of the world and it creates this disparity or a different image. So let's do a demonstration. Look at your finger, just hold it out in front of you and cover up one eye at a time and you'll see that the image changes, right? And that's because each eye is in a different physical location and as a result gets a different view of the world around us. That creates binocular disparity. The fact that the image that the left eye receives is different than the one on the right eye in the sense that the location, the relative location of objects is going to be different. This can be used to create 3D movies. On a regular two-dimensional movie on a flat screen, there's just one image. But when they make a 3D movie, they actually would make it so that there are two images superimposed. And if you see here, there's a red one and a blue one, right? The red one is slightly to the left, the blue one is slightly to the right. The red one is received by the right eye because you're wearing these red and blue glasses. We're going to be doing that in a little bit. And the blue image is sent to the left eye. And again, the glasses make sure that each eye only gets one of the images, the red one or the blue one. And that allows our brains to create this three-dimensional image out of a two-dimensional scene. Now, how does it do that? There are certain characteristics of how these images on the left and the right eye are. And one of the most important factors is which object, what object are we actually looking at? So if this individual up here is looking at this woman, his fixation is on her face, right? And that creates something interesting. Her image will actually be on the same place, same relative location on the left retina as on the right retina. Why? By the fact that both eyes are converging and looking at her. They are fixating on her. This distance then of his fixation point creates something called a horopter. It is an imaginary semicircle of any other object that might be the exact same distance away from him as the woman. And so here we see this plant that just happens to be the exact same distance. As a result, not only is her image in the exact same relative place on the left and on the right eye, but so is this plant. And so we can see here, her image is represented in blue dots, the plant's image is represented in red dots, and we can see that they're kind of consistent, right? Red on the left, blue on the right, red on the left, blue on the right. Now let's consider other objects that are different distances. So maybe there's this object here, D, that's further away. Object D will not be on the same relative place on the left and the right retinas because we're not looking at it and it is not on the horopter. However, points A and B will be on the same place on the left and the right retinas. Why? We're fixating on point A and point B just happens to also be on the same horopter, on that same distance. So objects A and B are going to be in the same relative places on the left and the right eye. So we can see that again. A is to the left of B, A is to the left of B. Now let's look at D. Remember, we're not looking at D. So D is not on the horopter and D will not be on the same relative place on the two retinas. So D is the green object and we can see that, oh, okay, it's in a different location relative to other things. So the distance between the green object, D, and object A, which we're fixating on, 
is greater on the right eye than on the left eye. Likewise, object C, which is closer to us than the horopter, is also going to be on different spots. And as a result, it's on one place on the left eye, but a different spot on the right eye. And so the image on the retina for A and B, the objects that are both on the horopter, determined by where we are looking, those images are going to be on corresponding points on the retina. The images of D and C, which are behind or in front of the horopter, will be on non-corresponding points. Now let's draw this out. Okay, now let's look at how this would work. So I'm going to draw a view from above of a person. Eyebrows, eyes. And this individual is looking at their friend. Nancy. And so there's a line of sight from each eye going to that fixation point. And then the horopter is that imaginary line of objects that are the exact same distance away. Now imagine two additional objects. Um, a cat out here. And a potted plant over here. Nancy and any other individual that's the same distance away on this horopter would be the would be on corresponding points on the retina. In other words, the same relative location. But the cat and the potted plant would not be. In addition, the cat is further beyond the horopter, and that creates what's called uncrossed disparity. One way of remind, remembering how that works is if you were to draw an imaginary set of lines from each eye to this other object, even though you're not looking at the cat, these lines would not cross in front of the horopter. And so that's one way just to remember what uncrossed is, that this is uncrossed disparity. In contrast, the point of view to the potted plant would cross. These lines do cross in front of the horopter. And that's a way of remembering that anything in front of the horopter would create cross disparity. These cues then help us determine the relative locations of these objects, the relative distance. Nancy and anyone else who is on corresponding points is all the same distance away from us. Anything with uncrossed disparity would be further away from us than Nancy. Anything with cross disparity would be closer to us than Nancy. The last little detail is that the farther away an object is from the horopter, the larger the disparity will be. So remember, objects further out create uncrossed disparity. Objects closer in create cross disparity. The greater the distance from the horopter, not from you, 
but from the horopter, wherever you happen to be fixating, wherever you happen to be looking, the greater the magnitude of the disparity, the greater that disparity is. So object B is closer to the horopter than object C. Therefore, object C is going to have a greater difference in the image of, of, on the left versus the right. The locations will be more disparate than for object B that happens to be closer to the horopter. Likewise, for uncrossed disparity, object D that's further away from the horopter than object E will create a greater amount of disparity, or in other words, the, the amount of difference in the location of, of where that object is on the left versus the right eye is much bigger. And that's the final cue then for creating binocular disparity. And as a result, we can put on 3D glasses and create this artificial sense of depth by creating two slightly different images that are going to create a view of something that is either in front of the screen we're looking at or behind the screen that we're looking at. So this is Mars in 3D from the Mars rover. If you're not wearing your glasses, you probably see a bunch of red and kind of greenish, bluish blobs, right? If you were to put your glasses on, this image would come together in 3D. And I just want to point out that here, for example, we have this hillside and we can see that the, um, the contours of the hill in blue are slightly shifted to the left compared to the one, the image on the, in red, that's slightly further to the right. And that's a pattern we'll continue to see. Here's a couple other images you can look at with your glasses on. Without glasses, they just look really blurry. And then let's look at this image. Without the glasses, we can see the big difference here, say in the teeth, the green image is pretty far to the left of the red image. If we look at that row of teeth, that's going to create the illusion of cross disparity with a high magnitude of disparity, making the front of the jaw where these teeth are appear to be far in front of the screen. In contrast, we can look at say the back leg or some of these other objects back here and we can really see that that starts to change, right? So objects that are further in the back, the red, instead of being on the right, will start to appear to be on the left and the, the, the relative positions will, will flip.